One of the reasons I love to read the Gospels is because in the Gospels we get a front row seat at the miracle power of Jesus Christ. We, we see the Lord Jesus Christ revealed as the Son of God with power who breaks into the life of broken, bleeding, and desperate people and leaves them empowered, redeemed, renewed, and transformed. I love to read in particular the Gospel of Mark because Mark seems to have been enamored with that miracle power of Jesus. And it seems that before Mark is done describing one miracle, he's jumping on right to another miracle. And then from that miracle to another miracle, because Mark wants us to see that Jesus has the power. In Mark 10, we come now to the final miracle of mercy in the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, th this is known as the miracles on the way. From Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through the end of our text, we will see the Lord Jesus Christ working mighty and marvelous miracles as he stamps finally his place as the merciful and faithful high priest. He is on his way to Calvary, but on his way there, he pauses to minister mercifully to those who are broken despondent and in despair. I love that church that the Lord Jesus Christ knows when to show up. And when he shows up, he's got the power to change situations. Our text opens by saying that Jesus is thronged by a crowd of people. It's a multitude that have walked with him as he has ministered mercifully along the way. And we come now to Jericho. Jericho perhaps was one of the most attractive cities in the ancient world. It was a city of palms. It was a place where roses grew and irrigation was piped in to make the vegetation there in Jericho bloom and blossom. And Jesus has now come to Jericho. Uh, but this New Testament Jericho is not the first Jericho in the Bible. Uh, you Bible readers know that in the book of Joshua at chapter 6 was another Jericho. And the Bible says that Jericho in the Old Testament was a fortified city. It was straightly shut up. And God had promised his children that they would possess a land that flowed with milk and honey. But before they would move from promise to possession, they had to first go through Jericho. So God gave instructions to the leader that if you're going to conquer Jericho for six days, you've got to march around the walls in complete silence. And on the seventh day, you ought to march around the walls seven times. But on the seventh time, you ought to shout. And when they shouted the seventh day, the seventh time around, the Bible says that the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Well, in that Old Testament Jericho, the shout made the difference. We come to this New Testament Jericho and there is a blind beggar on side of the road named Bartimaeus. And just like the shout worked in the Old Testament, it works in the New Testament because this blind man, he cannot see, but he can speak. And he hears that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And since the shout worked the first time, he tries it out this time. He lifts up his voice and cries out, Jesus, thou 
thou son of David, have mercy on me. If you will, let's examine this man's request. He, he, he now cries out to Jesus for mercy. But the man identifies church that Jesus was not just a mere man because he hears that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. But when he opens his mouth, he don't cry out for Jesus of Nazareth. He cries out, Jesus, thou son of David. That, that, that's because Jesus of Nazareth was Jesus historically. Uh, it was Jesus born in time. But he cries out, son of David, to identify that Jesus was not just a mere man but that Jesus was the human God-man, that he is 100% man, but at the same time, he's God and very God. Uh, he, he don't cry out Jesus of Nazareth because Jesus of Nazareth was that Jesus historically, but this man was desperate for Jesus supernaturally. And somebody in this church this morning needs to know that Jesus is not just a mere man. Buddha was a mere man. Mohammed was a mere man. Zoroaster was a mere man. Mary Baker Eddy was a mere man. Charles Taze Russell was a mere man. But Jesus was God's uniquely born son who broke into our existence to come among us as God walking with us, as God talking with us, as God leading us and directing us, God wiping our tears when we cry. God who gives us strength in the midst of life's struggles. God who is joy for our journey. God who is peace for our passage. God who is our hope in times of despair. He is man enough to be born of a woman. But he is God enough to redeem the woman that gave birth to him. He is man enough to thirst for water, but he's God enough to be our living water. He's man enough to eat bread when he's hungry, but he's God enough to be the bread of life that came down from heaven to feed us till we want no more. He is man enough to go to sleep on a ship in a storm but he's God enough to get up out of the sleep and wipe sleep from his eyes and speak peace to a storm and the waves cease to roll. The wind ceases blowing. The lightning stops flashing. The thunder starts roaring. And when this man calls on Jesus, he's not calling on a man because there are some things a man just can't do. Oh, I wish I had somebody in this house this morning who can testify that I came to church this morning because I need somebody greater than a mere man. There are some things that man just can't do for me. Man can't wake me up in the morning. Man can't start me on my way. Man can't put food on my table. Man can't put money in my pocket. I need God, and this morning I'm desperate for him. If you don't mind, excuse me for a moment and let me make my request known unto him. Father, I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me whither shall I go pass me not O oh gentle savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling savior master Jesus don't pass me by Thou the spring of all my comfort. You're more than life to me. Whom have I on earth 
besides thee. Whom in heaven but thee? Savior. Oh, gentle Savior. Please don't pass me by. This, this man is desperate. And when you are desperate, you are not ashamed to lift your voice and make your request known. But not only do we see the man's request, we also see the response from the crowd. Because there is a crowd around Jesus who rebukes the man. The crowd tells the man to be quiet. They tell him, shut up and go sit down. You do know that there is still some crowd control that shows up where Jesus is to tell desperate people it don't take all of that. Oh yeah, you do know that there are some people who say it don't take all that noise and you don't have to act like that. You must be uncouth. You must be illogical. You must be unreasonable. But some of you cute and sedity folk, you are the unreasonable one. You are the illogical one. Because if you don't know the extent of what I'm going through, you can't judge the extent of my breakthrough. If you knew all of the hell that I've been through just this week, you wouldn't judge my shout, but you would join in with my shout and help me call him up. They tell the man, man, be quiet, go away. But the Bible says instead of him turning down, he turns up. As a matter of fact, you ought to look down your road this morning and tell your neighbor's neighbor, I didn't come for religious form or fashion. I came to lift my voice and cry out to Jesus because there are some things in my life that nobody else can fix but Jesus and Jesus alone. If you came here to cross your legs and fold your arms, you are, you are right now getting my permission to get up and go sit somewhere else. But as for me, I'm going to shout this morning. I'm going to lift my hands this morning. I'm going to lift my voice this morning because I know Jesus. I know what he's able to do. He is able to do exceeding and abundantly and above all that I can ask or think. That's why when I come to church, I don't need no deacon to pray me happy. I don't need the choir to sing me happy. I don't need the musicians to play me happy. I don't need Pastor Anderson to get going to get me happy. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus, when I think about all he's done for me, all the ways he's made, all of the tears he's cried, dried, all of the burdens he's lifted, I gotta lift my hands and lift my voice. Cry out to Jesus. They, they tell him to, to be quiet. They rebuke him, but he responds by crying louder. And notice, church, this man gets the attention of Jesus. Jesus stops compassionately. He stops graciously for this one man who's crying out for mercy. Now church, when this man cries out to Jesus, he cries out in perfect intercession. Uh, he gets Jesus' attention because this man is desperate, but he's got the right disposition. He doesn't go to Jesus filled with pompous, arrogance, hubris, and pride. But he goes to Jesus simply asking Jesus for mercy. 
See, you don't know when to shout, church. Because you don't understand the mercy of God. M mercy is that Christian idiom that blesses us both coming and going. Because mercy, first of all, restrains God from giving us what we deserve at the same time giving to us what we can't pay for. When this man cries out for mercy, he's identifying, God, I don't deserve it, but I sure do need you. I don't qualify, but Lord, I need you. I need you right now. And the problem with us is when we come to church, we dress ourselves in pseudo-spirituality. And we act as if we have fell from heaven with lily white wings. And that everything is ever so wonderful about us. But can I tell you, you ain't fooling nobody up in here, up in here. Because all of us need a touch of mercy. All of us have said the wrong words. All of us have gone to the wrong places. All of us have hooked up with the wrong people. All of us have drunk from the wrong cup. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And every one of us this morning ought to acknowledge that God, I know I'm disqualified. I don't deserve it, but I need you, Lord. So Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm a mess sometimes. I'm a wretch sometimes. I do things I shouldn't do sometimes. But Jesus, blot out my transgressions. Create within me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. He cries out for mercy. Jesus stops and stands still and tell the same people who told him to be quiet. He says, now y'all tell him, I said to come here. Oh, it's good news this morning that we serve a God who knows how to flip the script. And what they meant for evil, God knows how to turn it around and work it all together for your good. The same people who rebukes him now has to reassure him and tell him, get up because Jesus is calling your name. That's the reason why, beloved, you ain't got to get on Facebook and chase down every rumor and lie, every subliminal message that small-minded people put out on you. No, you don't have time for that because we serve a God who knows how to turn those tables. We serve a God who knows how to make your enemies your footstool. And that's why you ain't got to get in no heated debate with anybody. You don't have to go back and forth with anybody because if you don't wake me up in the morning, if you don't start me on my way, if you don't control my destiny, I'm going to put you in the hands of God. Because when God gets ready, he knows how to make your enemies bless you. He'll make your enemies write you a check. He'll make your haters fix you some food. He'll make your enemies fund your ministry. Is there anybody here who know what I'm talking about? Who's able to testify this morning that I serve a God who's able to clean up the details. I serve a God who's able to restore my reputation. Let them say what they want to say. As a matter of fact, David says he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And if you get rid of your enemies, you just might get rid of your table. The same people who rebukes him has to reassure him they tell him, get up, cheer up, Jesus 
is calling you. And notice, the Bible says the blind man gets up. He throws off his cloak and he begins to go to Jesus. Oh, I love that church. The blind man gets up, throws off his coat, and began to go to Jesus. You're missing a good place to shout. The blind man gets up, throws off his coat, and began to go to Jesus. This man's throwing off his cloak is really an act of faith. Because during this time, people who had handicaps would wear special outer garments to identify their handicap. So this man was not wearing a priestly coat. He was not wearing a coat of authority or a coat of strength. He was wearing his weakness everywhere he went. But when Jesus beckoned the man before he got his miracle, he took off his coat and started going to Jesus. He hadn't gotten his breakthrough yet, but he started walking like he got it before it even came. Oh, I wish I had somebody around this church this morning who can testify. I may not have what I asked for yet, but eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the good things God has in store for me is there anybody here who could testify I'm going to walk like I got it before it comes no I may not have my new house yet but I'm going to keep this studio clean until my new house comes I may not be driving in the car I desire yet, but I'm going to keep this little hoopty clean until my new car come. I may not have my significant other yet, but I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take myself to Ruth Chris. I'm going to buy myself a steak of filet me on with asparagus and a baked potato. Why? Because I serve a God who may not come when I want him to come. But ought to have some witnesses here who could testify. If you just hang out there with the Lord, he'll be there. Right on time. He takes off his coat. And the man begins to go to Jesus. And then the word says, Jesus, ask the man, what do you want? Me to do for you. Jesus, your question seems so insensitive. You ask a blind man, what do you want me to do for you? Why would Jesus ask a blind man, what do you want? Well, church, he asks this blind man, what does he want? Because it is impossible for you to expand in victory if you keep hanging to your victimization. There are some people who don't want to be delivered because being broken is lucrative. This man had made a living out of his situation. This man was aligned on side of the road every day collecting alms so that when folk would be going up to the temple, they would feel mercy and compassion for him and they would give him money because they felt sorry for him. Jesus wanted to, want to know, do you really want this breakthrough? or you want to stay stuck in your condition. You know, there are some people who just love to feel sorry for themselves. I mean, they always have a sad story. Nobody knows 
the trouble I see. Whoa, it's me, and things are so hard. I mean, it is overwhelming. The situation is one thing after another. Shut up, child of God. What do you want from me? Oh, I wonder, is there anybody around this church this morning who when you assess the needs in your life, you didn't come to pretend this morning as if everything is ever so wonderful, but like this blind man, there you are in the presence of Jesus, and Jesus just have one question for you this morning. What do you want me to do for you? I got to sign all church, but I need him in a real way this morning. I need him to touch my heart when my heart is overwhelmed. I need him to regulate my mind when my mind is all over the place. I need him to heal my sin sickness. I need him to give me another sunshiny day. Is there anybody here this morning who can testify? I need thee, oh, I need thee. Most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine. Is there anybody here like the blind man this morning? You need the Lord to do something in your life. Well, the blind man looks at Jesus uh, and he says, Jesus, I want to see. In other words, the blind man says, Lord, I need you to fix me. I need you to move on my behalf. And the record is, Jesus says to the blind man, go your way. Because your faith has made you whole. Is there anybody here who came in faith to ask the Lord to take over my case? To ask the Lord to move on my behalf? Is there anybody here who came to give your problems over to Jesus? That problem that I had, I couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried and I kept getting deeper involved. But when I turned it over to the Lord and I stopped worrying about it, then the Lord worked it out. Is there any witnesses here this morning who can testify that he's able to work it out for you? But you've got to take it out of your hands and place it in the hands of the master. Jesus told the man, go your way because your faith has made you whole. The man came blind, but he left restored. The man came broken, but he left delivered. And I just want to tell somebody, you don't have to leave the same way you came. You may have came broken, sick and defeated, but you can leave singing a brand new song. You can leave singing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see through many dangers, toils and snares. I have already come. It was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. I gotta leave y'all here, but can I tell you, uh, can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus. Uh, 
can't nobody do me like the Lord do you know him have you tried him if you know him you ought to testify there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus no not one none else can heal all of our souls diseases no no not one none like him so meek and lowly no friend like him so high and holy can't nobody do me like Jesus do you know him have you tried him won't he make a way won't he give you joy won't he pick you up won't he turn you around won't he wipe the tears from your eyes like the blind man you got a choice because Jesus told him you go your way because your faith has made you whole but the Bible says the blind man started following Jesus I don't know how you feel about it but I'm like the blind man I just gotta follow follow Jesus where he leads I'm gonna follow but unlike the blind man I'm not just gonna follow him but I'm gonna worship I'm gonna praise I'm gonna bless him because he's worthy to be praised now if the Lord's been good to you if the Lord ever brought you out if the Lord ever made a way for you you ought to join in with me and shout thank you for how you brought me thank you for how you taught me thank you for how you kept me anybody here need the Lord to give it back to you you need the Lord to give you your joy back to give you your strength back you ought to lift your hands and lift your voice and shout fix me fix me Jesus fix my mind fix my family fix my marriage fix my finances fix my children fix my praise fix my worship fix my hallelujah is there anybody who knows he can fix it if you need proof that he can fix it come with me come with me to a hill called Calvary he fixed it one Friday when they hung him high stretched him wide he fixed it when he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder he fixed it when they buried him in a borrowed grave he fixed it but early Sunday morning he fixed it when he got up from the grave living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins away but rising he justified me freed me forever and one of these days 